Hey! Hello! After a long drive, we finally got here, a G&G factory. Uh, we've been invited down today to do a factory tour and get more information of how these vitamins are produced, about deficiencies, about the, the pros of the vitamins. Mm. So there's quite a lot to learn. Um, unfortunately, we're not to, allowed to film inside, so I can't film within the factory and you know the whole process but um, we're gonna be talking to two of the professionals afterwards and they're gonna let us know more about you know like deficiencies vitamins and even like when it comes to veganism and what vitamins are important in that diet as well so um, yeah I'm quite excited about this mm -hmm. there's a lot to learn because you know when it comes to these things I mean how do you even know what deficiencies you have how mm -hmm. do you know what your body needs and I'll show you what I can show you and what I can't we'll keep you updated yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's take this journey. Peace! <laughs> Peace! <laughs> Alright, so we're just about to head in. Yeah, probably excited. Gonna check out all the, the vitamins and minerals that we could ever wonder about. Alright, let's go. After you. <laughs> oh, okay. Walk in through the doors. Hey guys, so we're in Jean G Vitamins and we've just done the uh, factory tour which was really cool, learned so much information but I'm really excited to speak to Kirsty here to learn a bit more. We go by the name of G&G Vitamins and we've been um, operating for just over 50 years. We specialise in encapsulated supplements mm -hmm. so we don't use any tablets which obviously would require um, unnecessary fillers, binders, excipients. So we focus on vegetable uh, cellulose capsules, which are very easy to digest. Mm -hmm. And we obviously, you know, opt for the purest ingredients, and that's our, our main focus here. What would you suggest as the main sort of vitamins that people should look out for? And so one of the the main vitamin I would always kind of personally feel is important for people would be vitamin D, especially in this country where you know sunlight no sun. we don't get a lot of yeah. sunlight. Exactly. <laughs> so that's something we. I, I believe it's important to supplement, but obviously, you know, it's advised to check your levels first. And how can you kind of check what you're deficient in, what you're lacking? There are a number of ways to check your levels. One way um, would be to test blood. Mm -hmm. That's um, seen as the optimal way and the most accurate way. However, when it comes to things like minerals, um, it's quite difficult to get accurate readings from a blood test, purely because your levels change throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So an alternative way to check for mineral levels might be a hair mineral analysis. I'm a vegetarian, finding my transition into veganism. So I, I'm more interested now in what vitamins or minerals or anything supplements that I need that will help support my journey. So it's considered by experts that um, it's, it's truly possible to eat healthily on a mm. vegan diet. Um, but it would be advised to make sure that you're um, looking out for any nutritional gaps in the foods that you're eating. And that's where supplements can really help. Um, vitamins such as uh, vitamin D, mm -hmm. um, vitamin B12, vitamin A, iron, calcium, mm -hmm. iodine and uh, omega-3. All of those things have been shown you know, to have possible gaps in, in the vegan diet. Mm -hmm. So they're ones to look out for really and, and um, possibly supplement with. I think the problem I see um, at the moment is with a lot of the vegan companies are producing sort of what's known as vegan junk food, sort of processed food. And it's really important to um, be able to sort of tell the difference between what's processed mm -hmm. and um, sort of known as Frankenstein food and real sources of whole foods. Um, and I think that's where vegans need to be careful yeah. about um, the choices of foods that they're having. Things like beans, nuts, seeds, um, lentils, mm -hmm. they're excellent ways of getting in the amino acids into the diet. Soy is also another option, okay. which I know there's a lot of controversy over. Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't go near um, genetically modified soy. Mm -hmm. It's thought that basically about 90% now of the world's um, sources of soy are actually now genetic modified. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. And there's a lot of information out there that's now pointing us in the direction that um, GM foods mm. are, can actually be really harmful for the body. Yeah. I do believe personally mm. that having a small amount of soy in your, in your diet, um, maybe once a week, can be quite beneficial because 
it's all about making sure that you've got the right quality mm -hmm. source of soy mm -hmm. and that would be organic and fermented. It contains um, the nine essential amino acids that the body requires to build muscle and many other functions in the body. It also contains a really uh, beneficial component known as lecithin okay. which is actually really good for brain health mm -hmm. and has been shown to support um, sort of neurodegenerative processes in the body as we age. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, shown in studies that it can significantly reduce LDL cholesterol levels and it's really really good for immunity. When you choose organic fermented soy sources mm -hmm. not only are you getting all the amino acids and the vitamins in there and the less in, but you're also getting a really good source of um, probiotics as well. Mm -hmm. So that's something else people don't realise. When it's been fermented, that process itself is what actually um, produces the beneficial bacteria that can help um, kind of colonise our mm -hmm. digestive tracts and then improve immunity. Oh, wow. And these different soyas, does it say on the packet what kind of grade it is? When you go shopping for yeah. soy, it, it basically you're just looking for an organic source, and okay. if you if you look at the back, it was mm. it will be certified by the Soil Association mm. in the UK, and ideally you want it to be fermented, mm. because what uh, fermentation does, in the same way I was mentioning about soaking beans and yeah. seeds, any kind of process like that where you're breaking down um, the actual food, mm. you're allowing. Um, the, the beneficial compounds to come out and be digested by the body. Mm. So fermentation does the same thing there with, as, as with soaking. Yeah. So it will actually allow your body to utilise the nutrients. Mm. So what kind of fermented soybeans are, would you sort of recommend? Yeah. So you can get things like miso, which mm. people can have in a soup. You can get uh, tempeh. Natto is another one, okay. which actually is a really good source of vitamin K2. And then you can get tofu, obviously. Mm. But with any of those things, it's again really important to make sure you're looking for organic and fermented sources. What exactly are amino acids and why is it so important? Yeah, to so diet? amino acids are basically the building blocks of protein. Okay. So they're essential for muscle function. They're also good for cellular health, metabolism, and if you're deficient in amino acids it can actually cause cognitive changes and muscle wasting and, and many other things as well. Mm -hmm. If you think amino acids are the building blocks of life essentially mm -hmm. So, you know, if, you know, everything in our body is made up of amino acids. Mm. So if you look at it like that, you can see how important it is to make sure you're getting enough in your diet every day. In terms of consuming things like seeds, nuts, um, lentils, mm. legumes, anything like that, it's really, really important to soak them overnight before eating them. The reason for that is it helps to increase the digestibility and improve the bioavailability of the nutrients in there. All seeds, they mm -hmm. contain a component called phytic acid mm -hmm. and that component is very beneficial for the plant because what it does is it protects the seed from predators mm -hmm. so that if an animal came along and ate, and ate a seed in the wild, mm -hmm. what it does is it prevents the seed from being digested in the animal's digestive tract mm -hmm. so that the animal basically, you know, it comes out in their faeces oh, wow. and it can still be reseeded. Okay. So it's basically mm -hmm. nature putting in its, um, you know, protective mechanisms wow. to basically carry on uh, reproducing plants. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So what what that means is, although it's good for the plant, mm. it's not good for us humans because yeah. when we um, consume those things, if they haven't been soaked, they can actually damage the digestive tract. A bit like how gluten can damage the digestive tract. The mm. same thing can happen with beans and pulses and seeds. Mm. So, but when they're soaked, like I say, it allows um, them to be broken down properly and that will stop any inflammation or, or at least reduce inflammation happening in the bowels. But vitamin D is considered a hormone mm -hmm. um, just because it regulates thousands of processes in the human body. And obviously living in the UK, we have to be really, really careful about making sure we get adequate levels of vitamin D. Something we get asked a lot at health shows actually uh, by the vegan community is about you know, how we can get the source of vegan D3 mm -hmm. in a supplement. Um, because there's a big misconception out there that you can't get a vegan form of vitamin D3. Um, but in fact, that's actually very far from the truth. Mm -hmm. And you can actually get your D3 from algae. So that's what we use in our, in our vegan uh, D3 supplement. Mm -hmm. um, with vitamin A, there's actually two forms available for the body to use. Okay. The form that's known as the kind of uh, true form of vitamin A is known as retinol. And that comes from animal foods um, and is ready to use by the body. 
Now the plant-based form of vitamin A is known as beta-carotene mm -hmm. and that is the precursor to retinol. So what that means is um, when you eat sources of beta-carotene in carrots, um, leafy greens, that okay. kind of stuff, your body then has to convert it over to retinol in order for it to be used. Um, that is why I would suggest um, vegans check out their levels of vitamin A and then supplement um, where necessary. Another um, very important vitamin is vitamin B12. Now that um, comes from animal sources again, so it's an important one to watch out for um, in a vegan diet. So B12 um, actually helps with energy production, mm -hmm. um, red blood cells, liver detoxification, skin health, immunity, you know, lo loads of different processes. So with omega-3, that's very important for brain health, cognitive function, um, cellular uh, detoxification processes, and it's also really, really important in um, the development of neurodegenerative diseases as well, so just helping to try and protect against those as we age. Omega-3 is a very powerful um, anti-inflammatory for the body, and we can obtain um, omega-3 in our diet through sources such as flax seeds, chia seeds, and uh, sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. So I try and consume these on a regular basis, um, just kind of a tablespoon a day of each of those would be really beneficial. So omega-3 in the diet is very, very important for obtaining EPA and DHA, which are basically your um, essential fatty acids. So in terms of iodine, this is something that's found mostly in fish sources. So again, very important for vegans to ensure they're getting adequate amounts in their diet. So at some point um, years ago, it was actually decided in the UK by the government that it would be beneficial to add iodine to table salt. And that was because there was a lot of um, cases of people developing thyroid disorders um, as a result of the lack of iodine found in the soil. Mm. And obviously, as we know, um, the nutrients in the soil then affect the nutrients in our food. The issue here with the table salt is that it's actually been very highly processed. So it's gone through a number of, of stages um, to essentially take out the nutrients from the salt through going through all these processes. So quite often companies will add bleaching agents to the salt and this essentially strips the salt of its nutrients. So if you think of salt in its natural form, so sea salt or something like Himalayan salt, which I, I often use in my cooking, it's actually natural forms of crystals. Mm -hmm. And those crystals have developed in the ocean over you know, sometimes even thousands of years, mm -hmm. where all these minerals have built up um, you know, in the salt. So something like Himalayan salt, you know, that would have about 84, um, although don't quote me on that number, essential minerals found in there naturally. Whereas table salt, on the other hand, once it's had um, all the processing you know, that it's gone through, you're actually left with something like sodium chloride, which you know, is completely stripped of its nutrients. What would you suggest as a um, compromise to it? Yeah, so what I do is I, I basically buy um, something like um, sea vegetables, mm -hmm. which are a very rich source of iodine. And kelp is another good source of iodine. And any kind of seaweed, basically. And you can buy it in its dried form. You can often find it in health food stores. Mm -hmm. And then I grind it up. Basically, I've got a small coffee grinder mm -hmm. that I use. Um, don't tend to actually use it for coffee. <laughs> I, I use it for all these various superfoods and things like that. But I add the seaweed in there, grind it up, and then I actually put it in a, a salt shaker mm -hmm. along with my Himalayan salt. And I just sprinkle it on my meals to get my iodine sources oh, there. Wow, what an alternative. So in terms of getting iron from a vegan diet, you can actually obtain iron from things like leafy greens, spinach, broccoli, um, chickpeas. The potential issue there is that um, that form of iron is actually known as non-heme. And what that means is it's not attached to a protein molecule, which actually, when it is attached, so when it's a heme version of iron, and like you'd get in um, animal foods, it can actually be a, a much better utilised by the body. Mm -hmm. So that's where potential deficiencies can come in for vegans. Okay. Um, and that's where it's important to, again, check your iron levels out regularly. Now, um, since iron is actually used by the body for red blood cell regulation, mm -hmm. which actually then in turn helps with energy production, you can see why it's also important for women, the females, to make sure that they're obtaining enough 
um, iron in their diet, especially around menstruation, mm. when you actually obviously lose a lot of blood, so therefore you're losing iron as well. Wow, couldn't even think of that. So where obviously iron is involved in um, red blood cell production, you can see how this is linked to anemia, mm -hmm. because in anemia you're actually iron deficient. You can also have other types of anemia as well, actually, just on the side note there. B12 deficient anemia, um, also folate deficient anemia as well. So if you, do, if you are showing signs of anemia, you would need to check which of those nutrients you're actually deficient in. So as many people are aware, you know, we're often told to drink milk as a staple source of calcium. Now, milk does contain you know, high quantities of calcium as with you know, many other animal products. But you can actually get enough calcium from, your, uh, from a vegan diet. But again, you need to be careful about what you're choosing and what kinds of sources um, you're going for to make sure you're get, getting enough in the diet. So certain sources of uh, calcium in plants would be plenty of leafy greens, broccoli, spinach, also actually um, sesame seeds contain very high levels of calcium. Um, so I actually recently have decided to kind of uh, scatter them into my meals um, just to give that extra boost of calcium in there as well. Calcium is extremely important for bone and muscle function so it would be highly recommended to make sure people are getting loads of leafy greens in their diet every day um, you know, to help, to help uh, prevent osteoporosis. Um, and other kind of degenerative bone disorders as well there. So we're in Giving Greens, and it's owned by uh, g and Vitamins. So we're just in here, perusing, like seeing what's here. Lots of cleaning products, loads of vitamins, so yeah. It's all very interesting. Some I've never seen before as well. Hello, interesting. What's the one you picked up? What's that? Hello, interesting. That, and they've got these amazing products. So this is raw. Flax, pumpkin crackers, um, and then we also have this one, which I'm actually going to get today, is uh, the raw pizza crisps. So it's raw vegan. So we're going to try that out, and there's like loads of other raw options. I've never seen these ones. Raw millionaire bites, chocolate orange. It's Olivia's kitchen. They also do raw millionaire bites, salted date caramel, and then we've got all these, all these raw. Um, raw bars but what really got us intrigued were these raw cookies so raw vegan cookie banana bread we got vanilla and chocolate and um, salted ca oh, salted caramel and pecan and this is literally all raw all vegan um, we tried these crisps out earlier at G&G with um, Kirsty they were delicious this is gluten free vegan um, so yeah, there's just so much, so much nice stuff here. Okay, so we got given some amazing goodie bags. Just checking out what's in there now. Yeah, the vegan multi they gave us. They gave us... Yep, and then... Sacro... It's a big bag. name. I can't really pronounce <laughs> it's that. It's a big name. But what's that? So... And then also... This uh, Vita DM, which is a completely organic plant protein powder with natural vitamins, minerals and fiber. So it's high in fiber, vegan, 100% organic, made in Britain, and even gluten free. Um, so that's that there. Um, they gave us a whole load of information in the pack as well. So oh, it's I stuff to it. read through and yeah, just to expand your information on the vitamins you take and the reasons. Um, but today was just so useful. Crazy like the amount of knowledge that, mm. like it's crazy these people know what they're talking about they direct you in the right way i have better understanding of what i need to do for my body because everyone's different and just as a vegan what you know the things that you need to look out for in terms of deficiencies and vitamins and yeah it's just amazing really 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 interesting yeah. um, tour of the factory and how the vitamins are made like it just makes you think on a whole complete different level because I mean you don't really think about these things day to day but it was so interesting just to see it mm. work like it's mad it's just and they're so precise with everything like you know you, even just the way we had to, to, to um, like completely dress up 
Whoa, I thought he was going to crash. <laughs> I know, I was like, easy, Bella. <laughs> Sorry, my driver in front of us. Um, but yeah, the way yeah. you had to dress up in their like health, um, like the health and hygiene was just proper on and point. The like, that is yeah. no joke why they got yeah. that rating because obviously they take it to a different level. And the passion, exactly the passion, exactly. the atmosphere, the energy, like exactly. everyone there loves what they were doing, mm. and you could see that. So, yeah, it was just really interesting. We're very grateful. Thank you, G&G, &G, for you. allowing us to see that and experience that and for all the information you've given us. Um, I hope this video has been of use for you guys as well. Like, yeah. If you have any questions, contact them. I'm going to put their information there for you. And, yeah, check the website out. And they have a whole range of amazing things. I fully recommend you look into it. So, yeah. Peace! <laughs> Long drive ahead. My... Yeah. That was good. Woo! Bye! Ciao for now. Okay, and what about Adamantine Adam Adam beans? Edmami. Edmami? Edmami? Edmami. 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 Wow, we've been saying it wrong this whole time. Edmami, yeah. And what about Edmami beans? Um, I don't know too much about the beans. <laughs> I can't even. That's the first time I've ever called them that. Edmami beans. Edmami. Edmami beans. Oh, and say it. Okay.